Hello and welcome to Dell's Gaming and this is from the Depths Designer where I am on the Marine Nationale design craft and it's time to build another ship for the Marine Nationale preparing them for a little bit of escort duty and in the background we got the Fantastic which is the destroyer come light cruiser um, for the French so what I needed or would like to build is something with a little bit more oomph because that's only got five guns although it's got quite reasonable AA and, and um, anti-missile it's mainly a, a fast closing ship um, I'm looking for something a little bit more powerful but not overly powerful so what I was looking through the ships that were available and in the cruiser class which I think in the light cruiser rather than the heavy cruiser there was a couple of um, prospects and also I'd like to look at a couple of items that were brought up in comments so we're going to combine those together in one ship now the ship I'm gonna, I have selected for the build is the um, La Galicionier now excuse me if I get that wrong but that's I'm mostly going to be the only time I say that so um, <laughs> hopefully it's roughly correct which was a cruiser around the 1930s and it was the last one to be built before um, the start of World War II so it was their their penultimate cruiser I'll go a little bit more in history in a little bit but the main um, point will be it's gonna have these triple guns so we're gonna have a look at building um, some triple six inch guns now i've already built these ones but i'm going to go through the the methodology i use for um building guns and what is the important bit for building triple guns in particular in this case and there's a couple of ways of of doing um these builds and i chose one here whether it's the right or wrong one i don't know but it works um and we just discuss what the bits to look at um, when building those the other bit is going to be just basic ship AI I'm gonna look at how I set how I set up ship AI for my ships in general and just some pointers and some bits that I tend to set up on the AI in general so whilst we're um, in the background starting the basic build of the ship the La Galassonniere class of cruisers were initially designed in 1930 after the London uh, Naval Treaty where the new class of light cruisers which was anything under a 6.1 inch gun and up to 10,000 tons was um, uh, brought into play um, and the French were given an, an allotment of cruisers to fulfill that role along with the Italians and all the other countries and the La Galas the La Galassonniere was basically a upscale of the Emile Bertin which only one of those was made whereas um, there were six La Galassonniere uh, created between 1930 to 1935 their design was aimed to counter the Condottieri um, cruisers of Italy which were fast but relatively lightly armored and lightly armed um, so they did the move of putting on three triple six inch turrets to give it a more um, firepower than the Condottieri and able to basically take on their armor also the um, La Galassonniere had a reasonable armor values compared to um, many light cruisers of its time going up to a, about 4.1 inch it was better than most light cruisers of the time with the exception of the later versions of the Condottieri which went up to five inch but the earlier versions only had like one inch and some um, later American ships but um, it was comparable to most other countries um, armor the actual ships themselves were split into two 
divisions or um, squadrons, one based in the Mediterranean and one in uh, Toulon to do for the Atlantic and uh, North Sea. And they did partic participate in the early phony war as such, um, chasing down Italian fleets, um, merchant fleets and also some German uh, blockade runners, but there was nothing con con uh, conclusive with those. When the Germans took over France and the Vichy government uh, agreed to the German armistice, the two squadrons were, were set to sail for Toulon and also Dakar. The Mediterranean um, squad was intended to go to Mirs, Mirs el Kabib. Um, where the Force H were going to attack the French force, which, you know, is a, a different area. and uh, But they didn't get there in time before For Force H actually was in the area, so they ended up going back, back to Dakar, Dakar. They didn't actually perform any other acts during the war until the Americans actually took over um, North Africa at which time they did join the Allied fleet. The ships in Toulon were scuttled at that time, but the three that were in Dakar were actually sent over to America eventually and had a refit where their basic AA guns were upgraded to um, American standards, the aircraft catapults were removed from the ship because um, American was basic American sea power was based more upon aircraft carriers and it wasn't seen to need to have float planes um, as being effective on the backs of cruisers. The ships then did come back into the European theatre and did partake in a number of landings including Normandy. The actual ships themselves did survive past the war and were involved in a number of areas such as the Suez Canal incident and actually lasted until the 1950s with one which I think was the Montcalm was um, actually in service until the, or, well in service didn't actually get scrapped until about the 1970s. With the hull generally laid out, just needing some guns and a bit of tidying up, AI, etc. The bits we're going to talk about. It's first of all, let's look at the gun. So this is the one that I had made previously. So it's a, a 152mm uh, triple barrel. Should get around 34 rounds per minute on each gun. Now, for me, important one, the uh, RPM... It's the same on every gun, and we've got a, a, a reasonable um, shell here that is designed to basically go through, if we um, just get on, on board here so I can uh, uh, have a look at the gun. There, I have control now. So it's been designed to go through some various levels, so it's possibly through one... Um, alloy block or an alloy block and stone but it sort of gets stopped at two etc so let's let's just see its its penetration so against one alloy block through without a problem against a metal single metal block also through uh alloy with me with a stone behind yeah it's going partially through not a hundred percent second shot goes through so now we're going to two um two alloy now they are actually already damaged it's going through an alloy with a stone in between is blocking it and also metal that's sort of letting it through with the stone is blocking it so generally this alloy stone alloy is um the defence which I've given the ship itself and uh, it doesn't go through a metal block or possibly two um, alloy blocks so that's good now that was based upon the expected armour piercing so 
Um, it's normally if I was going for two metal, I'd have that up to about 40, but um, this is about 21. A single alloy is 13, so it should be around 23 ish to get through two alloy. Um, and then the, and the expected the kinetic damage is only 2300, so it's okay for what it's going to go through and uh, what I have aimed this for. Um, as I say, the intention is, is to go through a about one metal and or one um, alloy okay so that's the gun but building it now I'm not saying the Tetris on this isn't the best in the world I'm just going to take off some of these blocks so we can see a little bit more how um, this was built up now for me uh, one of the key considerations is um, having all of the guns have a similar rate of fire so that they fire nicely now if you're not worried about uh, the rate of fire of individual guns your uh, Tetris of this lower part can be significantly different now I've done a, a fairly simple uh, Tetris of just putting a Auto loader with two clips so one clip each side and these ones in the center have one clip each side now the key factors of this is the auto loader because the auto loader if it is um, touching two different gun areas so the central gun goes straight down this center here and we've got the two coming just one either side um, let me see if I can uh, take some off the top so you can see um, how the how it's done on the top as well if you bear with me one second so you can see I have the same layout for all three guns and I have the firing piece in the center here all lined up and then we go back with our gauge increases cooling vents then we do a little u-bend and come down and the central one goes forward two more and then down and to keep the cooling the same on each of the guns because this goes forward two more down at the bottom of this cooling vent it has just some uh, uh, connectors two connectors so that it basically equals up if you're not worried about it put some more connectors down there uh, sorry some more cooling vents and the center gun would have better cooling next part right um, so the Tetris down below what I was saying about is the auto loaders if an auto loader is touching two of the different guns um, vents etc it will automatically connect to the the APS with the lowest ID and then when you connect a uh, ammo clip it will obviously go to that particular gun so the most important thing is you don't want a ammo clip to be say going uh, in example uh, if I take an example here where we've got it connected to the front and I but I actually want it on the rear if I connect it there you'll know even though I was connecting on this one it will go to the gun with the lowest ID let's just see what the IDs are actually here that's four 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 three and what happens is even though it's suggesting there when this reloads in I have found that it seems to reconnect to the gun with the lowest ID so in other words it's not always the way you would expect um, it's inconsistent frankly uh, using auto loaders if you can try to connect them and try to guess which ID is going to be the lowest and it, it, generally it doesn't work the best idea is to make sure that all of your auto loaders have a good one block gap between um, different APS systems now ammo clips are different in that because they have this uh, marker on the bottom of them they only connect to a specific autoloader 
so it's possible to use these in the gaps you've created so if you create a um, I'll go back here and just create this again if I if I've created this auto loader here oops, sorry here I can put the clip in here touching this one without any risk of it getting connecting uh, and uh, getting pulled into the wrong gun so but frankly use your auto loaders carefully and then balance up your rate of fire with the clips so by getting the clips in the gaps etc um, and you can uh, increase your reload speed by having two clips per auto loader because the, the uh, way it works now is it's not necessarily how many auto loaders you've got it's how many clips and auto loaders so um, adding an auto a clip on both sides to an auto loader will increase the speed of that auto loader's um, uh, rate of fire basically so um, you'll see here I've tried to separate them. I've, I like also to create very definitive zones. You'll see down here. I have created a zone here with a with a uh, a uh, clip, um, so it's not connecting to the auto loader down below, and everything's nicely sort of linked in that way. The other bit to that is directional is the recoil absorbers because again they have this marker. When you connect them to a gun there's no risk of um, them connecting to the wrong gun no matter which way you attach them they always attach to the, the gun that has that uh, particular we call it a sucker connected to it um, that is good because you can fill up the center section which i have here you'll notice with recoil absorbers to balance the recoil absorber um, system and that is how I build them. Now, um, I wanted to keep the width of this gun reasonable, so these only go two out from the base uh, turret. If you're doing a, a bigger gun, you might have to push this out a little further. These, the quad gun here, for example, has the, does have them going um, horizontal rather than vertical uh, it's a much bigger design and this is actually a quad barrel design so it's slightly different uh, in some ways it's actually easier because you just uh, make them four quarters absolutely identical and in the center you put something which is uh, won't connect to either side so that one worked out okay um, a triple one is a little bit more difficult than the in a quad in my view because you've got an unbalanced side they don't all come down even you'll notice at the back here I actually have some space I could if I wanted to increase the rate of fire of this gun by elongating the rear a bit you'll notice that I've gone uh, three here and I'm only going one uh, sorry I've gone two here to the to the front but only one to the back so theoretically I could increase it but for me as I say rate of fire on all three is important anyway that's just how I build my triple guns um, for looks necessary rather than necessarily for um, performance now I'm gonna fit them to the gun and the next we'll be looking at the um, AI. With the ship just about complete, um, it's certainly done uh, complete all of the weaponry. I've added secondary weaponry, torpedoes, um, AA guns, and it's also the engines are now complete. So we're ready to look at the AI, and that's going to be two parts. First is maneuvering. So um, uh, we do not have dual AIs on this, but I'm going to, for this purpose, only look at the manoeuvring AI. Or should we say the navigation, which is manoeuvring in your battle position. Uh, so the manoeuvring. Uh, first stage, get your ship so that it floats and moves along without tipping up. So um, with manually driving this, basically... Um, it goes forward, speeds eventually speeds up. The uh, 
it's set at slow speed at the moment and it turns okay without tipping over so make sure that your rudders and any additional propellers don't try and turn the ship upside down just because you're turning uh, left or right so okay assuming that is all a-okay we can start putting in the ai so for that we um obviously you're going to need a mainframe and you're going to need to decide where you're going to put it now frankly i normally put it down in the depth of the ship but in this case i'm gonna i think i might put it into this location just here just below the bridge i have got a second location here um no, we do we do the traditional. We'll, we'll put it down in 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 the depth. There is an even further down location, <laughs> um, but that's a little bit close to that uh, ammo. So we'll put it in this location here. So plenty of wood underneath to stop any EMP getting into it, and we just put in a simple AI block. We'll put it in the centre because otherwise it will not be correct for me and um, we'll put some connectors in and this will be the primary we'll put a transmitter in um, just on level one okay that's enough just to get us started so maneuvering if we go into the um, AI menu here and select the ship we've got unnamed now first of all I'm gonna give it a name nav and prime pry which oops let's just get those capital right means it's the navigation and primary weapons now the first thing we're going to look at is maneuvering now um in this case obviously we've got a ship um i'll do plane and other types of ai if people want and um, i'll put add them to my list so for a ship there's we've got a few potential possibilities you could add all of these different ones to a ship but obviously the standard ship we're gonna make it nice and simple here there's no need to be um, uh, problematic and you can see actually in the background it's already starting to move off now a couple of bits I like to set up one the distance I like to keep leave at zero I find that's okay for ships um, really do I need to change that um, for ships for planes you have to but for ships I tend to keep that about right um, it tries to keep it always at the right spot rather than going too far away order completion distance now I do tend to increase this especially for fast ships so that they start turning to the next point before they get to their actual waypoint um, this is quite a long ship so I'm gonna put that at 150 meters which is about half the length of the ship and uh yeah it will start turning before it reaches the other location ideal pitch now the pitch um obviously i would say obviously uh, is more of an aircraft thing but for ships if you can have the front of the ship pitch up a little bit then um it will go faster because it will lift it out of the water slightly but you do have to be careful of this as i have seen shown on other other ships um too much of a pitch and they start trying to fly so something like this a nice little three uh, degree pitch now the other point on this is with the standard it means if the ship starts to pitch above that angle it will slow the engines down so it will stop move forward movement to say you're gone too high now if you do have a ship which is tending to pitch up too much um, you can have this as a, a safety measure to stop it disappearing up into the sky so but I like to use pitch controls and we'll go through that in a second now the idle distance um, I don't like it going too close to other ships so we set that to 150 right that's our basic without any pids that's our basic control of the ship and just to look at those pitch controls what i did is in the bow down below is some hydrofoils and you'll see at the moment they are up 32 angle if we put on the, the um we can show all the 
forces we can see it's trying to lift the bow up slightly to get us that um, plus pitch it's having a bit of a problem this, this ship is actually a bit front heavy at this moment um, we can also see this pump is also I've set to pitch control and it's uh, maximizing the pitch on that and you can also if you wanted to to put some on the rear so on the rear here I actually have sort of a reverse I've got some here they're actually on um, if I put that as pitch down um, we'll see that the current pump I'll put that down low there we go so that's now going to go down and we've got another pump down here which I think is also on pitch yep so um, they're actually flooding at the moment to try and lift that front up because uh, it's very front heavy but generally that's working now next stages now that we've got a basic movement we can set commands in fleet mood move for this ship to complete the next stage so what have we got to complete if we go back to the ai we've got adjustments this is the next element that i set up so we're going to do on water avoid all ships um, the altitudes you can effectively um, ignore depth requirement um, this is important obviously you don't want it going into um, the coast now the way that the coast is in netto it's fairly sharp so I just basically like to set this quite high um, something like this about 60 and to be honest I'd best we just set it at a hundred um, and done with it um, in most cases because I just don't want it near the the ground but if you are in some shallow water area it can have a bit of a problem so um, 70 I think would be about right allow reverse um, I personally don't like allowing reverse I like my ships to always go forward and do a turn around to come onto a point if you have a ship that you want to have in exactly the right point on its waypoint for whatever reason maybe because you actually want it to go backwards um, to keep distance with a target you may want to allow reverse I don't I like them to keep going forward especially these ships where they want to keep the speed they then go faster forward than they are reverse so you want them to keep the speed up my, my particular uh, preference on that uh, terrain prediction 10 seconds I always maximize that turning circle um, if you've got a little tiny ship you might have a 50 meter turning circle uh, this is not a small ship this is going to have a significant turning circle now how to work out that timing turning circle is to use another area now we don't use the uh, the platform over there and what I'm going to do is in here in um, planning mode I'm gonna set up a waypoint so it's we're gonna go over to here then we're gonna effectively line up just a little bit north of the the uh, platform just go beyond it and then I'm going to basically do a 180 degree turn so to make sure it goes the right way I'm going to go up there and then back this Moving way up. and basically I'm going to use my distance from here when I start the turn to when I end the turn to determine uh, let's just Moving out. can I take that one away no I can't take that one away which Moving is always out. annoying okay we have to go with it um, so I'm going to measure the distance from when I start the turn to when I finish the turn so let me just get this ready and we'll see how that goes and then we'll see how quickly this can turn now I will add one thing at the moment I'm at my cruising speed which would be the minimum turning circle so I'm going to put myself up to effectively battle speed in the engines and so um, if I just find my controllers which are in the engine room down here where are we where are we where are we right so 
battle speed is a 2000 so I'm going to set my um, boilers to run at 2000 so we're more or less heading in to our target point um, and once it flicks over it's roughly westward which is good and I think just there we are 150 we're gonna say 150 meters from the platform so we're gonna see what happens when we're basically uh, going due east so we started off at west at 150 meters we're still turning we can see we got it at the tightest turn possible to back to there which we don't need obviously it's done our actual turning circle is going to be a lot larger than this but we're this is to gauge it so we've just gone north and we're at 750 so uh, we're already quite a big turning circle and we're going on a little further and a little further more so east is just about coming in and we're just about equal distance so if we say there the distance is 980 so we say 950 so um, that actually had about an 800 meter turning circle and you know it's it's this actually I think is maneuverable in um, ship classes now that's still quite a big turning circle so if we go down here we're going to have to set that to 800 meters and that's going to become a, this has two effects or I say two effects multiple effects um, one effect is obviously stopping you running aground because the AI will now um, if we look at our parving options if I set a couple more um, waypoints to do the same again so now that we have that set you can see our turning radius is giving a slightly more accurate um, turning circle for our ship going into the next point you can see that angle where it's aiming for is going to be more accurate um, and that means it's not going to try and do these hyper tight turns when in reality it's going to have to turn a lot tighter the other change is in the maneuver we can change the order complete distance we don't want to have the order complete when we're right next to the waypoint when we have no chance of turning directly onto the next waypoint excuse me turning onto the next waypoint so i set it about halfway so we've set it to 400 that will hopefully make it turn a little bit neater the next primary AI section is combat and the behavior. So the behavior is how this ship will, uh, what this ship will do when it detects an enemy um, vessel or aircraft or whatever it happens to be. Now, um, I won't go through detection systems. That may be something else I will do on a later video um, if people want it. So going back to the AI, we're in the behaviors now this is a ship now they've got a couple of possibilities um, for ships you could do circle which quite simply means that it will go and circle try and keep the range at a particular distance which could be beneficial to certain ships um, and it's almost like a broadsiding type of system so um, um, but it's not my favorite system as such uh, for ships you could do point tap especially if you had all the guns on the front so the point tap basically just tries to keep the ship pointing at a particular tar at the target at a particular range and will go forwards and backwards um, a broadside is another good one which we will look at later keeps it on a specific broadside angle at a particular range um, ramming as the name suggests will try to make the ship ram the opponent um i'm not going to use that myself so um the other ones are also possible but we're going to go for a standard naval as a starting basic ai so the basic naval ai is the basic naval system and it works in most cases to um, make the ship go to a specific set broadside angle at a, a particular range and 
uh, try to stay within that range that you set the range brackets now you do have to take in your turning circle into account here otherwise it can have a problem now first of all we want to set the broadside angle so let's say um, with the broadside angle the lower the figure the more that the ship will actually start heading in towards ta the target so you could even set this down at five degrees and it will most be effectively go head in but you wouldn't be long before you're having to turn around again so um, yeah having this you you might not want 90 having 90 basically is very flat-sided and it's going to keep range ni nicely though so let's just say for this one we do want it to get close because it's a fast ship have a bit of an angle so 75 is actually about right i think for this particular one that will work out quite nicely it will get the rear guns um online as well as the side okay starting at range so the enter broadside range is the range at which the ship will start to turn to that broadside angle so you must take into effect the um, turning circle of your ship we've got an 800 meter turning circle so to go to 75 degrees if we halve it is going to take 400 meters so if I set this for some reason to have an ideal range of 400 meters I would never reach it um, basically I'm going to collide with them before we actually turn into the 400 meters um, so it's just not going to really turn in time yeah assuming you're going straight towards it and then you suddenly have to turn so um in this case what i tend to do is add a little bit more on so i actually want this ship to be an ideal range of about a thousand meters as an example so i'm going to add half an on again so i'm going to say 1200 is when i start turning in then my minimum range is the range at which it will head back to this leave broadside range so um, we'll set this one up next now again we've got a turning circle of 800 meters 400 to go 90 so we've got to at least have it at 800 but I'm gonna again take another 50% off and set it at 600 and then on the opposite side if we leave broadside range so if we go further away than this figure which again is going to be the four, 400 um, and we're going to halve that to be 1400 why am I halving it well I do actually want it to turn back sooner than um, uh, sooner than as it can to because it's going to be heading away in a, a quite a, a 90 degree angle so okay that's our area we're going to try and keep between 1400 but this that's going to go up by about another 200 or so two to 400 and we want our broadside to start 1200 and minimum range 600 so let's give that a go and see if we can actually do that and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring in a, a target and um but not have it do any shooting so i have set up a prowler and turned off its ai so we shouldn't get any combat um, we have got some actually we've got some incoming torpedoes but we'll try to ignore those for the moment so initially we're at 3000 meters so the ship as you can see with the direction is going to just try and turn towards the target and get within range during the get within range it basically goes straight ahead uh, which might not be ideally what you want you might want to come at an angle and we'll look at that uh, later on as as some possibilities of what you could do about about that so now we're heading we're about 1900 we're about to hit the 14 1200 meter section so we just hit the 1200 meters and you can see the ship is trying to turn to a right hand side broadside and how close are we actually going to go um 800 so we started turning at 1200 or thereabouts and we've gone down to 600 our ship is actually a little faster than expected so yeah it went down to about six under 600 uh to get try and keep that broadside now it's going to try and keep that 75 degrees so it's going to start turning again 
but you can see how close we got and now it's going to try and keep that broadside factor so try and stay within 600 to 1200 i think we said it for currently still trying to keep that roughly keep that broadside and the broadside angle is rough it's not an exactly keeping uh, uh the angle to a exact 75 degrees you can see every now and again it turns in to what it thinks is a good angle and then it goes straight for a while so it's, it's a bit hexagonal in, in some ways and it's keeping that range now quite nicely and we're around the 1200 meters with the speed and the, the, the lack of turning rate it's always going to be going slightly so away I showed the basic AI of closing in straight ahead and then turning to broadside but what if you don't want it to close head-on um, at certain range you want it to start firing and then more gradually and this is something that actually came up in Menti's battleship brawl in there there's a lot of ships just take too long they stay aiming straight ahead whilst they're closing and their rear guns don't get into action so first of all work out the angle of your rear turrets and in this case I know it's 30 degrees um, so what I'm going to do is go down into the AI room down here and add in an AI card slot which I've already actually added in at the moment and a behavioral routine so we've got a, a blank AI slot sorry card slot and I'm going to add in two here so that now means we can add in multiple routines I'm also going to add in a couple of ACBs which I know I'm going to need so I'm going to need um, I think three at this moment so right first stage what we're going to change is the first AI we set up so if I go into here this behavior here we set up we're going to change this this is going to be going to be a close so close close on target okay now we're going to set this up so that at very long ranges and we're going to set this as high as we can 3000 and we're still going to have our we want it to go into say the minimum of say 1000 meters and we want the angle here to we know we said we the, the rear turret was 30 degrees well we add a little bit to that so we're going to say 40 degrees so it's going to go in at 40 degrees as soon as it gets below 2900 meters range so it's going to try and it'll close to 3000 and then at 3000 it will go to the 40 degrees so that's okay now what we want to do we don't want this to have an effect all of the time so actually we're going to set that to yeah 1200 there we go 1200 so once we get to within 1200 meters we'll add in another we can do this two ways we can add in another AI and duplicate what we had but there is one other bit I was talk would talk about is um, the standard AI sort of changes between left and right angles and it seems to select it fairly much not necessarily at random but it, it doesn't seem to be always be logical let's put it that way so what I like to do is add in a broadside so we're going to look at the broadside AI behavior so the as it says here broadside right and if the angle is positive it will go to the right hand side if the angle is negative it will go to the, the other side so obviously um, we're going to set that up again 75 we're going to set it at eight, yeah, 75 degrees and we're going to have the maximum distance again is going to be 1200 meters so this will come into effect at 1200 meters and the minimum distance again we need to allow for turning circle although hopefully we're coming at a bit of an angle so um, we're going to set this up to be again about 600 700 meters hopefully I'm going to say at the 700 there we go so it's then trying to say a 75 degree angle between 700 and 1200 and this works on right but I'm going to need one for the left as well 
So if I add another broadside, and we go broadside left, and we basically reverse those. So we've now got the three, beha three behaviors, close on the target, broadside right, broadside left. Now we need to set up the um, AI to switch. So I'm going to go down to those controllers I set up. First one. And we do it based upon the range of channel one. So it's our primary target. We don't want just any old target. We want our primary target is between, is, is basically if there is a target and they're between, well, if they're anywhere, um, this will be our default position. Then um, mainframe set behavior to be close on target. And that's got a priority of zero. So that's going to be our default. The next two, this is where we're going to use bearings. So this is going to be our right hand side broadside. So if the bearing, and we don't need one other, oops. Here we go, one, two, because this is done for our slave. So we don't need two settings here. So first of all, we're going to start with the bearing. So if the bearing to the target, uh, where are we? Is from um, just from straight ahead. So we're going to say one degree to the right, down as far as, say, one 70 maybe because if it's starting to go behind us maybe we should go back to uh, uh, the standard um, setup so 100 to 170 so if it's basically on the right hand side mainframe set behavior broadside right now one other thing we want to do is increase the priority so I've increased the priority to one so that means that it will override this one. Now the other issue is I don't want this to happen if they're far away. I only want this to happen if the range, and you see this is a slave condition, if the range is between 0 to, we go a little bit further than 1200, we're going to say, um, we'll say 1300. And now if we go back to the main one, you'll notice that it's got two requirements so it's got to be within 1 to 170 and the range is up to 1300 and now we're going to copy this over to the other side and we'll just reverse these so this becomes minus 70 170 and minus 1 and left hand side behavior So let's now give this a go and see if this performs as I hope. So we've got a prowler again out at 3,800 meters. So we're first of all going to now be in our close on target. So initially we are going straight at the target to try and close as quick as possible. And we're just about to hit the 3,000 meter mark and we've gone to an angle so now we would be trying to keep that 40 degree angle while still uh, closing on the target so if we look from our rear turret actually that's that's quite nicely on target it's about the 40 degree hopefully it will actually go a little bit closer we could might even be able to knock that down maybe to uh, 35 degrees it seems to be uh, um, quite happy there now we're heading getting closer we're not getting as close as we are it's steadily moving to the right but we're getting quite a, a, a big broadside still which is which is fine we are getting closer there we go it's turning in to try and keep that void i don't know exactly at what point it decides to make that turn um whether it's a matter of it has to get to a certain angle away from that original 40 degree that's something i'm not aware of 
just about coming into 1400 and I think it was 1300 it should start to move over to the other and we have we've now gone on to broadside right so initially it will try to close with the target and it's done to go it's in its 1200 yep so it's now going to try and keep a 75 degree target uh, sorry angle to the target so it's brought us in quite nicely I and mean, we could tighten that up in this ship so I would most probably um, change the close on target maybe bring that down maybe even bring it down to the 30 yeah so maybe take it down to the 30 and see how how that that goes with that particular setting I think the others are about right so that's it for the AI. Hopefully that's done a, an idea of how you can do a two-stage AI um, using the extra behaviors to be able to close in on a target and then keep a broadside at the range you want. So we're keeping around that 1100 meters mark now from the, the target, which is roughly where I want it to be, give or take a little bit, and you could tweak it just to fit change your angle down a little bit if you want to be a little closer and if you want to stay away increase the angle and give a wider range on the two uh, distances just to get that the distance just where you want it to be for those that use the time code to jump straight to here um, this is the ship the final ship at the moment with the AI all the guns and uh, everything else set up um, so we'll go for a quick review some of you have already seen the AI setup and the guns but generally what we have is triple um, we'll bring up the area 152 millimeter guns with a shell which um, if I go into here uses a heavy nose to get there we go set that up correctly but that might pierce a good 21 but importantly getting the kinetic damage up to be able to pierce a metal block and or a bit little bit more maybe two um, alloy blocks um, beams so um, that's a uh, the prime primary for those guns it's then got some secondary guns which are basically 19 millimeter AA guns and some simple weapons and torpedoes that's the basic uh, weaponry layout these are set to fire at about three and a half thousand these anything from two thousand and the guns depend on their type from one thousand two hundred down to six hundred so they they fight uh, fire fairly close and the torpedoes have a range of about three thousand meters so um we have some anti-missile systems which is obviously didn't need in the real ship but um, obviously we need against the lightning hoods speed wise uh, we're at normal speed now about 10 meters a second during a battle speed it will go about 20 meters a second and when it's trying to catch up and chase within um, a target down it will go up to about 28 meters a second it does have shields with um, decisions to, to turn the shields up on only if there is an enemy on the particular side they're about strength five all around um, just and set to work against lasers and only go up to full strength if there is a laser hit in the last 10 seconds otherwise it will go at half power uh, propulsion we have mainly steam propellers with a couple of normal ones just as a, a backup system and engines wise we are primary is we've got four big boilers which are set to um, auto regulate so they should automatically get up to a target pressure speed um, on each of these just uh, check to make sure they're all set up yep um, so they're set to go into this engine room where I have made the engine um, all the boilers go to each side so it'll balance it uh, in case of any damage so we don't it won't end up with one side um, not having any steam for any reason um, four pistons going out to the six reduction gears and we also just uh, also have electric power 
to act as a buffer for when the shields come on and down here we also have some very simple um, fuel engines primarily to charge the batteries up um, when the shields come on and act as, as a, um, a backup power system. So now time to give it a little bit of a combat test. So what are we going to be up against? Well, this is going to be an escort ship, so I, it's not going to be taking ships on one at a time, but it is designed against the lightning hoods. And um, I think we'll try it, first of all, against some planes, just to see how it does do in the AA role, because planes are quite uh, common with the... Um, lightning hood so we'll give it a couple of different aircraft which I think would be um, suitable so we, we go against each of the types of regular so looking at it it's going up to full speed to try and close with the targets because they're over 2000 and then it will reduce its speed again uh, the all the guns are firing we have the anti-missile systems we've got one I think that was the orbit already taken out and they're now going for the surge I'm guessing will be primary target at the moment uh, when it's in range. The main guns don't have that high an elevation, they only have a 20 degree elevation but at, at range in the lightning hoods when they get low that is good enough for them. Um, yeah, the firefly is down and the surge is taking some damage. We're taking some damage ourselves at the moment due mainly due to missiles. But generally, I think that's working. Our 90, the dual 90s and the main guns are taking out that aircraft. Okay, that's fine. It survived that without too much problem. It's even launching torpedoes at the surge. Now it's in the in the water, which is good. So now against some surface targets, and I'm going to go against regular because this won't be normally on its own. So we'll go for a, a Volta, an Ampere, and say a Flash as a fast ship to get to go against. And its priority is generally um, fast and or close. Well, close ships first, then um, size, and then some speed so it's going for the ampere with its main guns and the secondary is going to be going after the flash until the flash gets quite close and then it may change because the uh, distance but it's closing in with the ampere um, it took a fair bit of damage there from incoming missiles initially which is um, not necessarily the best of things possibly it's a weakness it's anti-missile systems not ideal but it's standing up against the lasers of the ampere reasonably and the main guns are oh it's getting a, that's that's a little close but the guns are let's just say we're not going to miss now And the Flash has become an aircraft. But, uh, and we are firing the main guns against that Voltar. So it's switching between the Voltar and the Flash, which has become an aircraft. So reasonably successful in its escort duty against a group of small ships. So let's now give it the final test, which is must be the largest ship it would, I would expect it to go against, which would be the Eclipse. So we'll just do a one-on-one -on -one battle against the Eclipse and see how we go. Um, guns are aiming in. We'll see how the, what the damage is looking like 
on the other end, see if these guns are... They're not going to be penetrating like the battleships on the Littorio, but it should still be hitting and doing a reasonable amount of damage, hopefully. And they are coming in. That We're getting good hits um, on the ship. It's a regular, not massive amounts of damage, I'll say, at this moment. Be nice a little bit more. But it is stripping away the blocks consistently. We're getting some good hits every now and again and a few um, misses, but yeah. Torpedoes coming in as well to add a little bit of extra damage on below. And yeah, it's, it's stripping away. This is a, a sort of a tough target for it. And our own ship is actually not taking any damage so far. We've been quite lucky and not taken anything. Where obviously our missiles are defending us against the missiles incoming. And he's, got in, he's not quite in range to use those... Uh, well, we're staying out of range, so we can't use those... Um, simple lasers against us. Well, we have to taken a little bit of damage with missiles incoming there. Didn't quite get the uh, missile interceptors out. Possibly range. We've got those lasers now coming in. Gave us a bit of damage. We're now going to be trying to kite it a little bit because it's got within its minimum range. And oh, missiles got us from the rear, unfortunately. So that's obviously our weakness is the rear on the missile defenses, unfortunately. Maybe I need to put a missile uh, system on the anti missile system nearer the rear. So we kited away and uh, are now able to get it back into the broadside and do the consistent damage. But uh, obviously rearward was a bit of a problem. So I need to put a missile defence maybe up here or on the very rear just to give that little extra anti-missile defences when they're directly behind. But otherwise, um, yeah, I think that's an okay escort cruiser for our French fleet. So, any uh, comments, please leave them down below. Now, I'm also, um, in this, I looked at the triple guns, and I don't think I did a great job on that. So if you'd like me to redo that, um, go into some detail and actually show building one from scratch, please let me know down below. And I looked at the AI of four ships with multi-behavioral uh, ship AIs. Um, I'm going to put down a comment and a list of items I'm intending to look at over the next um, while. If there's any other items you would like me to look at, maybe, or you think are interesting in the game, please comment them and add them as a reply to the pinned uh, comment and I'll see if I can add them to the list of future videos to do. But until next time, as always, leave those comments about the ship, which ship next, um, or just on the ship next, maybe, uh, maybe look at aircraft actually next, ready for a carrier. But if any other suggestions, leave them down below. But above all, keep playing the game and have fun.